What's up, everybody? Welcome to this week's episode of the Well Man's Podcast. My name is Brian Brosey. I'm joined by my friend and co-host, Keone Tita. Keone, how are you today? I'm doing good. Thanks, everybody, for listening once again. Please tell your friends about it and have them have them uh, follow us. Ask us questions. I mean, we... Please. We love we. I, I mean, I don't know about you, Brian. I, I love doing this stuff because it's highly educational for me every every yes. week, and then also have, hearing the feedback from people on my social media pages and stuff about it, and then also my clients and patients tell me a lot about it. Just it just helps helps me to deliver better information to people. Absolutely. So, so tell people to leave us a review, help us grow and help us help others. If you know someone that a specific episode would help, please send it to them and we'd be happy to have this chat with them like we are with you. Right. right. So I know Keone, we want to talk about kind of something that's near and dear to both of us because we both run kind of cash based or alternative, not insurance care, healthcare businesses. Right. So you being a naturopathic doctor, you do not bill insurance. Me being a physical therapist, when I'm working for someone else's company, typically I am billing insurance, but in my own company, Be Well Physical Therapy and Wellness, I've chosen to go all cash base. And there's uh -huh. a very specific reason for that. And, you know, short story long or long story short, it's because I believe it provides a lot better care and individualized care. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, absolutely. So just in your experience, Keone, up until... I guess, opening your own clinic at any point, what was your experience like billing insurance? Did you ever have that opportunity? Like when you're in Washington, as an example, mm -hmm. um, and can you just kind of talk about that care or kind of your experience, I guess, if you have any with insurance at that time? Well, so, so I'm, I'm a little bit unique because I'm in a state that doesn't recognize my physician's license, right? I'm, right. I'm actually, I actually carry my, license in Washington state, but yet I don't practice in Washington state. Um, so, so coming, coming to North Carolina to practice um, um, as a, as a naturopathic physician, um, I couldn't get covered by insurance anyway right. with that. Now I am a licensed acupuncturist. So there I could, so I do have experience with insurance there, but let me just say this. First of all, I've talked to a lot of primary care docs and I'm trained as a primary care doc um, who just, just can't stand the insurance game. And there's a number of reasons for that. I think you brought one big, big one up. I mean, it, it just, you know, it's kind of very protocol based. It, it takes the art out of medicine, so to speak. You, you kind of have to kind of follow the guidelines about how you how you treat people and you have to document everything. And not only that, you have to make sure that your documentation is, is exquisite or pristine, right? And sometimes that takes a whole nother person in your office to do that job alone, which is very expensive, especially for me with a small clinic. I, I, can't, I can't afford to do that. Yeah. Um, and I don't want to because um, the other thing about it is when you do bill, you, you don't get full reimbursement most of the time. You're talking about if you bill, for, bill let's say $100 for a service, you know, you may, if you're lucky, get 40% of that back mm -hmm. as payment from the insurance company, right? Mm -hmm. So then, you, then you're kind of like playing this, you know, this in, insurance game. There's all kind of ethical questions about that and how you bill, you know, it, 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 and then it's just not fun. And so then you do that. So, so let me give you an example of what happened to me. So I, I with my acupuncture license, was um, working with the VA, and we were, and I was doing insurance. And it, it was a little bit different. Like I didn't have to, at least initially, when I got involved in the VA program. I think it was their, I think it's their choice program. I don't know what it's called now, but all I had to do was fill out these forms and send them, send them in to somebody and I could, I could do them by, by hand. I just had to, it's like little, little fill in the, the dots or circles, like, you know, right. kind of like you take a multiple choice standardized test. I mean, mm -hmm. and then, you know, put the appropriate codes in there. 
And for a while, that was great. We, I was getting almost full, full reimbursement. I, you know, basically the VA basically said, well, what do you charge per visit? I said such and such. And they, you know, say, well, in our choice program, we can give you such and such. And it was almost as much as what I was charging. So I was like, which is amazing. Right. Which was, which, which, which is, which is amazing. Well, all of a sudden the VA, I don't know, like, change their program or somehow change their program. And all of a sudden when I would, we would send these forms and it still cost me money to send them in. Okay. So mm-hmm. it's still losing some money there. Send these forms in. They'd always get sent. They were starting to get sent back. Mm-hmm. And, and it was almost like we fell into a black hole in the VA. Um, some of the patients, they said, well, we don't know who any of these people are. And then you call them and say, Oh yeah, we have, yes, we have that person. Please send the forms again. We, the, so over the years of doing this, I mean, uh, the VA owes me like thousands of dollars, which I don't think I'll ever see right. again. Yeah, because not a in hell. <laughs> right, and and then they're also saying, well, you should get a billing service to do that. It's like, and how much does that cost? Uh-huh. Oh, well, it costs fifteen to two thousand dollars a month. You know, or something crazy that just yep. is not feasible for me. Yep. Um. So. So you know what what do you do with that? So, pretty much you know, I have to eat that or as a practitioner. um, Oh, and by the way, I'm not allowed to to bill the VA patients and I wouldn't feel right about billing them anyway. So Mm -hmm. I don't do that. Um, Well, do I want to spend the money on getting a lawyer to try to get reimbursed? Well, that's that's more money. Or do I just want to try to write it off on my taxes if if you know, I'm making a profit that end of the year, that's probably a better choice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you said a bunch, a couple things that I really want to unpack. Definitely, st- I think insurance, like you alluded to at the very beginning, it creates a wonderful standard of care that takes the pract- the art of the whole situation out of it. You get a standard of care, you do not get individualized care. Right. And I have seen that countless, I mean, working in physical therapy, it's very interesting because you basically as a physical therapist, you build the insurance company this code, this code, you know, six, seven digit codes that mean you did gate training or you did Therax or you did manual therapy with someone. Right. And the government or Blue Cross Blue Shield or whoever they may be, I should take all the names back. <laughs> Any insurance, X insurance company before I get, <laughs> before we get uh, taken to court here, <laughs> yeah. X insurance company says, well, that, that unit or that code is worth X. And just like you said, that may not be what you charge or what you're doing for that person may not necessarily even fit into those codes. Um, so it creates, it creates this standard of care that you have to fit this person who's a square peg and just shove them through this circle, circular hole right. for this to work for you to make ends meet financially. Mm-hmm. And right. then you spoke to about documentation, which is huge. I'm sure it's huge for all healthcare providers, but as a physical therapist, that is 75% of my job when I'm doing insurance care is to write documentation, send it to an insurance company that will never read it. (laughs) We'll just look at the bottom and say, okay, he built X, Y, Z codes. And if I have specific sayings in there, like skilled physical therapy interventions were required today to X, then maybe they approve it. But those little keys are what they're looking for to approve it versus hey, Janice has knee pain and Janice can't run anymore and X, Y, Z. And they don't care about Janice not being able to run. They just care about Janice, I guess, being more of a functioning member of society at at bare bones. I mean, at minimal, they just care that Janice can continue on. They do not give a shit about Janice's hobbies or whatever the case may be there and what she's actually trying to obtain, which is something we deal a lot with because we see people quite often at the, you know, when they're at their wits end or at the end of the road, or they went to this healthcare provider and especially in physical therapy, I see, you know, I went to my doctor, I've got knee pain. He sent me to get an x-ray. Of course, you know, I didn't have any broken bones, but I had to get an x-ray first for the insurance company to be satisfied. And then I had to go get an MRI to actually see what was wrong versus just walking up and getting, getting what you need. We have to go through this standard of care that follows this protocol. You get the x-ray first, regardless of how, you know, worthwhile, we think that is, and so on and so forth. And it just creates a jumbled mess. And it's super expensive. And not only like you mentioned, where for the provider, you know, I may bill whatever code and get reimbursed a portion of what I 
I'm asking for, but it, this, we've all seen it as, you know, having health insurance where you go to the doctors and you say, all right, time to pay my copay. <laughs> oh, that'll be $10. Okay. So $10. Great. And then two weeks later, you get a bill for like $330. And you're like, what <laughs> the right. hell was exactly. that? Why didn't you tell And there, no one can really tell you where it came from, how to get rid of it. It's just all this mumbo jumbo that's lost in translation with so many different entities other than the healthcare provider providing your care and having a say in it. And, and I don't think people have the uh, have an idea how much time it takes to make sure that you're doing all your documentation right. And I mean, f- at least in for acupuncture and definitely primary care physicians, there's whole courses that you have to go to yeah. to know how to fill this stuff out. That's why a lot of docs are just like, I don't want to have time for that. I just right. need to, I just need to get somebody as a biller, but you have to be a big kind of business entity to be able to afford that. So for people like me, who's like a, you know, a one man show, so to speak, and same with you, it's, it's, it's very problematic. And um, if you are going to bill insurance, you actually have to go to some of these courses to really know how to do that. Yeah. Um, When I started my clinic, there was two people that I initially did, like I said, I did take cash based that I did try and give them a super bill. So, hey, you can submit this to your insurance and maybe they'll reimburse you, maybe they won't. But it it took me maybe two hours, Keone, to make my own form with the codes and all of that. And guess what? (laughs) Denied. (laughs) Right. And and that's that's the way I do it though. Like I have, Mm -hmm. I finally uh, standardized my template for that and just tell them, I'll tell all my patients and clients like here, I'll give you the form you submit to your insurance and submit it to your insurance, see if you can get billed. But for me, it's, it's fee for service. So you pay at the time of your service and then you, yeah. here's the form. I'll give you the proper documentation. You send it in and see if you can get reimbursed. And sometimes, sometimes they do um, mm-hmm. get some reimbursed, but most of the time, yeah, I get, they, they uh, get denied and it may not be because of, you know, they don't, they're, they're not approving of the service. It may just be because you didn't cross your T's, dot your I's, right? That's why it was right. denied. Or you, and you know, you didn't have the follow through to stay on top of them to get that reimbursement, you know? Yeah. You know, for me, it's like for my first office call um, for natural medicine, my, the fee is like two, 272, almost $300. And I'm with the patient for an hour, hour and a half. And then after that, then it's like a hundred dollars a half hour, sixty five for for like forty minutes, and then thirty five mm-hmm. for like ten. What we have a, a scale for that for acupuncture? It's ninety seven for the first visit, seventy seven for subsequent visits. Um, you know, if you want to pay one time, you know, per visit as you go, you can also buy packages. But do you really want to spend your whole day as the patient? submitting your forms and having to resubmit and get on the phone, get put on hold, all this stuff over $97, $77. I mean, if you do, great. But that's one reason why I don't want to do it because I don't have the time to do it. I'd rather, I'd rather see, see patients. That's, yeah, and that's what is funny. When patients do have tried that, that's when it all clicks as, for, as to why I do not take insurance. I don't even play the game. Oh, oh, absolutely. They're, they're just more um, empathetic about what you do as a healthcare provider. Um, and when they really know the numbers that they're talking about. So for example, like if you, if, if you go to your regular primary care physician for a visit, I mean, when you take everything into account, let's say you do a copay of $20, but that visit actually costs upwards close to $1,000. Right. You know, when you think about it now, mm-hmm. compare that to an out of pocket or, or fee for service. My mm-hmm. first office call is like 277, 272, something like that, depending on what's what's going on. Much, 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 much cheaper in the big, big picture. Yes. Yeah, you know, but that's part of the insurance game, right? Well, we'll, you know, we'll make them pay a thousand dollars a month in insurance. But guess what? You know, we'll also tell them when they come in, they have to pay ten dollars. And then, and then, you know, if there's anything the doc did that we don't approve, we'll just build that the patient for it. I mean, it's just, you end up paying much more than you actually think. Yeah. hundred percent. And I've seen, uh, it is just so frustrating. Cause like you mentioned that 
the insurance person is sitting at a desk. They're not, they've never met Janice or whatever, and they're not a healthcare provider. And you state, I've had this happen with like spinal cord injury patients. You state your claim for this specific type of chair that they have, that they need X, Y, Z. And it's denied because, well, in their eyes, it's not medically necessary or whatnot, but not one time have they seen Janice, you know, not one time they have never taken a course on anything Janice is dealing with or anything like that. Um, And obviously that's a, that's an extreme (laughs) example because it's spinal cord injury, but things even like I alluded to where if your goal specifically, like with my physical therapy practice, if your goal is to get back to CrossFit, Blue Cross Blue Shield, don't give a shit about your PR. (laughs) <laughs> they really don't care, but you do care and you yeah. care about your health. And this is where it, the Otis really is on you. And that's another thing about doing this cash pay or these fee for services is you're paying for the outcome. And if you or I, Keone, don't provide the outcome, then, well, they're going to stop working with us. And then it's yeah. not that they don't have the value with them and it doesn't right. make sense anymore. Whereas in insurance care, it's really just the opposite. I mean, you go you get what you get from your doctor and that's kind of all you can do. Yep. And you're just yeah, and it's almost, mercy. And, it, and it's almost like you, 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 in a sense, as a patient, you're almost can become complicit in your own healthcare, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Cause you feel like you have you, no choice. Well, yeah, but you also, you know, it's about, well, I'm just going to go to the doctor and get fixed, but you know, it's really about, you have to fix yourself too. Mm-hmm. You know, and and unfortunately, our healthcare system doesn't give you the tools to help you fix yourself and get to the cause of what's going on. They they're just like, OK, you have um, arm pain. All right. Well, treatment here is a shot of steroids, yeah. you know, or something like that. And I think you know? it alludes to what we I mean, insurance will provide you the fix, yeah. but they're not providing you with your wellness or you being yes, well. Yeah. That's not their concern. The, you know, the other, the other thing that's really intimidating about it all, and, and you probably are, are, you probably know this because you are actually just, you're, you're a new healthcare provider, mm-hmm. but to do cash based, you have to, you really have to be an entrepreneur. I mean, you, mm-hmm. you have to, you know, hit the ground running. I mean, me, I'm, I'm almost what, I can't believe it. Like almost 20, maybe 20 years into this. And, you know, I, I'm in one town, People know me in this town. Um, I've kind of built up my, you know, clientele via word of mouth. So, so I'm not hustling as much anymore, you know, like trying to get patients. And I know that's one of the things why primary care docs and other healthcare providers are so afraid of doing cash-based practices because they know that it's hard work to, to get established doing it. And it's just easier to play the insurance game. Right. Because the insurance game drops the person off at your door. Right. You, right. Uh, if cash base, you have to go mm-hmm. prove your value, prove your you worth have to, to these people. You have to prove, you have to prove your value is exactly right. And, and that's the other thing. And it's a shame because it, I do think it just takes somebody uh, deciding, but really having the ambition and the drive to, to make it work. Once you, once you make it work and it will work, once you make it work, um, you know, life, life uh, is much more enjoyable and becomes easier, you know, and you, and you enjoy what you do more because, because like you said before, the art of the medicine is put in, is put back into the practice for you. Once the insurance thing is kind of taken out of it, yeah. you know, and, and it's a shame. I mean, the insurance companies need to f- find a way to marry the art of medicine and get it back into there instead of being very uh, protocol based. Yeah, that's a great medicine. point. That's a great point. And it, it's, I mean, it's because I see it firsthand. It's astonishing to me the care I'm able to provide when I am, you know, at my job versus running my business because of this insurance based thing. If it's insurance based, I'm there with my computer 24 7, typing right. away this documentation. Today, I saw a handful of Be Well patients and I got my iPad that's got my notes for me. <laughs> like right. what, what I'm concerned about knowing about the patient and I jot my little note down and my 90 minutes, 60 minutes is 100% focused on this person, not crossing my T's, dotting my I's, making sure I put skilled physical therapy interventions were required today too, and have these very specific yeah. protocol based sentences. And so it allows the practitioner to be with you versus 
sit and talk with you and figure out how they're going to comply with the insurance company so they can feed right. their families as well. Right. Yeah. So it's a real shame. It is a shame. I mean, I think it, you know, it, it, it's not, a, it's no longer about wellness and finding the root cause when, you, when, once the insurance comes in there and, and then we have to find a way that has to change somehow, you know, and the other unfortunate thing about me and you is um, the, the, the patients that we, in one hand, it's yeah. unfortunate, right? The mm -hmm, patients mm -hmm. we see, because, you know, at least for me with like, you know, I, I feel like I'm an expert in lifestyle medicine, you know, well, that lifestyle medicine is going to be much better, better uh, served, given out into poor communities. Right. And I will never see those people. Right. I mean, I rarely will I see them because they, they just can't afford my services at all. Right. You know, they can't even come, come close to it. I mean, so, and that, and that's a shame and, and, and same for you and your private practice, mm -hmm. you're just not going to see, uh, you know, people, people like that. And, and the poor communities can really, can, can really use healthcare information that teaches them how to be well and, and be educated in understanding their bodies and how they can prevent themselves from having to go to the doctor instead of using the healthcare system in just emergency trauma situations, you know, I mean, right. in the long term, you know, doing wellness medicine, um, especially lifestyle wellness medicine, uh, it, it takes a lot of burden off the healthcare system because people mm -hmm. understand, they get an idea of where sickness and illness come from. Yeah. Or, and also kind of stopping it in my perspective, musculoskeletal health, stopping it before it does stop you from working when the insurance yeah. company starts to care. Yeah. So for, so what me and you do is I would say we, we truly do what's called preventive medicine and it's not preventive medicine in the way that the conventional system defines it. Preventive medicine, the way the conventional system provide uh, defines it is going and getting your blood labs, getting your annual mammogram, you know, getting your, your, your colonoscopy and all of that. But there's there, tr what truly preventive medicine is, is understanding how your body reacts to an overload of the standard American diet or lack mm -hmm. of exercise or um, not getting enough sleep. Um, what, how that just, you know, can ruin your body and then also how it can heal your body. Right. So that you may not be down the road in that situation. You, you may not, you know, when you do go get your colonoscopy, it's not a constant, you know, or, you know, worry about cancer or you reduce your risk significantly by understanding these other lifestyle approaches and how to eat in an appropriate way and view, viewing food as more than just calories, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. yeah. and exercise more than just activity. I mean, these things yes. are medicines. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. You know? and, and I would add to kind of your point, Cuny, it, one, you're hundred percent right. Just in the fact of, unfortunately, being cash based and having certain uh, values for our services is going to limit the people that can see us. But on the flip side to that, I would say your insurance healthcare provider is not doing a podcast to educate the public to try and, you know, obviously we're trying to educate the public, educate ourselves, but we're also, you know, this is growing our own personal brands, the Wellman's podcast, bringing traffic to our clinic and we're exchanging our information, all this value for free. And that's available for everyone and anyone. And then, yep. you know, I do a free 15 minute consultation with everyone before we get started. Yeah. And if I can't work with you and I've had this happen twice already, and I've just been in practice since October or September, but for myself where, um, you know, I talk to someone, they've just flat out say, well, I can't afford your services and please let me help find you the insurance person that is going to at least do the best job that I know that they can do. Right. And right. you get that from from this this level of care. And also you don't get burned out clinicians. You know, if you're in the hospital or you're seeing me, I mean, Keone, there are uh, clinical rotations and things like that. I saw 80 to 100 patients a week, a week. I mean, it's, <laughs> yeah. um, I'm sorry to say, but by Friday at three o'clock, this is my 60th knee, man. I don't like everything's mumbo jumbo for me. And you versus... certainly don't feel like doing a podcast with me. I know that <laughs> after that. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> well, you know, here, here's the thing. Like, uh, 
for I would be doing this podcast anyway. I mean, mm -hmm. I, all your help to do it. I mean, as a team, we work we work well together. But I would st I would try to do it anyway with you. Um, you know, just because I enjoy it and I like the education of it. But it does take a lot of uh, you know bandwidth to be able to deliver these podcasts, and it does it does have a cost a cost to it. But I oh, can't yeah. imagine I can seeing eighty pa them together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. And, but seeing eighty patients a day um, for the week, and then trying to build your brand and all that stuff. I mean, that's you know, I just don't. That that's kind of crazy. And you probably don't have the enthusiasm in there to right. to those people who actually do it. It probably seems like work. Whereas it, to me, this is enjoyable for me. You know, I I, I like doing these weekly podcasts. Um, even if we didn't have an audience, I would, I, I like the education of it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, to, to me, that's my most, you know, the education is like a precious resource, right? I mean, yeah. Um, I mean, just like in our last episode, part, I, uh, honestly, 75% of me feeling okay getting that vaccine as early as I did was our conversation. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, absolutely. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. Doing the education, talking about it and, and trying to, you know, you know, discern fact from fiction, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's, and helping other people to do that. And yeah, and, and uh, being okay. cash based, you know, you're challenged to, to make offers or things that are of proper value for people. So, you know, I, I thought to myself, how can I attract, you know, if you don't want to spend a full session with me, what information can I give you if you have back pain or whatnot for a lower, much, much decrease nominal fee or whatever the case may yeah. be. So you, you seek out all these opportunities versus the insurance thing. It's just, this is how we do it. And we rinse and we repeat and we hope it works and we move on. Yeah. And we've got all these productivity standards that aren't your outcome. They're the productivity standards that make the business run and make the insurance happy, but not much of it at all is based off how great of an outcome you had with that practitioner. Right. Right. Anything else, Keone? Well, I mean, talking about, you know, you being a doctor of physical therapy, I mean, think about how, how much of a burden the healthcare system has with people who didn't go see a doctor of physical therapy first. And I know the system's not set up to be that way, but think about all the neck pain, all the back pain, all the elbow pain, all the knee pain, all the ankle pain, all the, you know, whatever kind of musculoskeletal pain that you have out there. The system is set up to go see your primary care physician first. They don't really understand what a physical therapist does and they treat them with anti-inflammatories or a steroid without ever getting to the true root cause. Right, which is how we see constantly. And I know you see this as well. Yeah. Hey, I got my steroid shot, it felt great for four weeks, but all of a sudden it's right back here and it may be even worse. Mm -hmm. And well, yeah. we never or, treated the problem. Oh, I mean, it's as simple as, you know, your, your, your gait structure is wrong and your posture is wrong, but yet you want to keep running. And maybe if you would have taken the time to see that physical therapist or look it up yourself, mm -hmm. you know, after 10 years of running like that mm -hmm. in those shoes or whatever, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have knee problems, you know? I mean, if you here, we talked about this podcast, I think you brought this up. I mean, if you, if you like running, right. The injuries are not caused from running. They're usually caused from improper form of running or poor tennis shoes from running. You know, there's this whole myth out there that, you know, by running at a young age and always running miles and miles and miles, it puts wear and tear on your knees. No, it's usually the wear and tear comes from improper form mm -hmm. of running mm -hmm. or the shoe wear is wrong or something like that, that a physical therapist or somebody looking at the body as a whole could probably have told you long before you even got in that situation. Yeah. Yeah. And at the, just uh, given that opportunity, I'd like to say that most states at this point have direct access to a physical therapist. So that varies oh, cool. state by state, but like, for example, in Florida, you can see a doctor of physical therapy for 30 days before you need to go before the DPT has to send you to a doctor. Now, obviously there's, right. and this is the benefit of being cash pay. You make all these sorts of decisions and you're able to kind of work with people a little bit differently. And maybe you don't have to send them in this healthcare system shuffle that they typically get lost in. Um, and that's huge. And that saves people thousands and thousands and saves our country and yep. the healthcare system, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. System. Absolutely. 
So Keone, where can people find you on your clinic and yeah, whatnot? www.nhcnc.com. That is my clinic website. That's the main way. And then, you know, at Keone Tita on social media, they can just type in Keone Tita, they can find me. But to get to my clinic and to my, uh, I call her my guardian angel, Melissa, who yeah. can get people. Uh, Thank God, or else the podcast that. will never be scheduled. Thank God for <laughs> Melissa. <That's, yeah. laughs> yes, Melissa, I love you. Thank you. You are the me best. Too. Um, so if you, <laughs> so anybody who t- uh, contacts my clinic will probably be talking to her to uh, to get scheduled. Um, and there's a link and how, to what about that, you? There's a link to Keone's clinic in the show notes, and there's also a link to my website where brianbrosie.com, all one word, and in there I have. You can basically select a type of visit that you want, select a free consultation. doesn't matter where you are in the world. A free consultation is a free consultation and I can talk with anyone I want. And, so. and I also want to bring up Ryan, because I've had a lot of patients ask me this about you is um, they're like, well, he's a physical therapist. I, I don't have to see him in person. That's not necessarily true. Correct. Correct. That is hundred percent right. correct. Now, obvious, right. and this is where the insurance stuff comes into play but what type of care are we giving, right? So today I saw one patient where it was definitely PT. And then I saw another patient where I build wellness services. I didn't put my hands on the guy one time. You know, it's, okay. it's not always necessary. So it's truly about, and what's funny about that is working in a facility, they're gonna want you to bill a group of codes. So you want to build or bill Therex, there, you know, all these different codes you wanna bill so you can get a wide diversity of reimbursement. Whereas for me, this is what the person needs. <laughs> and I'm so for both. So for both me and you, I mean, I, I see a lot of people virtually and it yeah. sounds like depending on the issue, you certainly could do also could see absolutely. Also. I can absolutely yeah. see you virtually and I can absolutely point you in the right direction if I can't help. And I would be yeah. happy to do yeah. so. Cool. So feel free to reach out to us. If you know anyone that would benefit from listening to our show, please send it their way. Like, subscribe, review, all that good stuff. It just helps us grow and help more people. Um, And we enjoy talking with you and your time each week. So until then, be well. Take care, guys. Bye.